So now with the Dark Knights in this enclosed space, our next step was to move them back into their old home. Their former home was a network of interconnected outworlds that spanned both floors of my home. A great home for them, minus the Uncle Milton Ant Farm, which will no longer be part of their network. Or we could make them a totally new home, one that is not only escape free, but is also aesthetically exquisite. After thinking about it for a moment, I had the perfect plan and idea for the Dark Knights, and I couldn't wait to share it with you. Also, there was a bit of a problem I forgot to tell you about the new Skull Island setup. While moving in the ants, I made a very concerning discovery. Turns out, the baby tarantulas could actually float on the water. AC family, Skull Island needed a water beast to make sure any escaping tarantulas would be dealt with accordingly. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. Last week, we had a roller coaster journey in our AC Antiverse. We witnessed the coming and going of ant colonies, and in a surprising turn of events, we saw how the Dark Knights, our super colony of black crazy ants who had escaped their setup due to a breach in their ant farm connections, were able to set up an encampment in a plant bag within my chameleon's enclosure before I moved them into this large glass tank. Well, this week AC family, we are up for yet again another exciting ride. Now that we have the Dark Knights confined to this rather bare bones living space, it's time we design them a home that they truly deserve. And I can't wait to share what epic plans I had drawn up for the Dark Knights. Today, we will also be revisiting and updating you on a relatively new addition to our AC Antiverse, our yet unnamed Suriname Horned Frog. Stay tuned because in this episode, you guys will get to give him an official name, as well as see if he'll accept a special food gift I have been wanting to give him. But let's begin this video with our first order of business. Behold AC family, welcome to Skull Island, the newly created home for our ghost ant colony, scientifically known as Tapenoma melanocephalum. I love this ant kingdom designed to contain these super tiny and elusive ants, which are known to be escape artists. The island sits in the middle of a misty moat a moat that ensures the ants are unable to escape. It is an open setup, which means that the ghost ants benefit from the good ventilation as well. The various darkened nooks and crannies offered by this gnarly driftwood piece and collection of skulls allowed additional space for the ghost ants to explore, create nesting areas, and store their brood. By the way, these ghost ants need a name now. So guys, I've chosen my top five favorites coming from your suggestions. AC Council, please take the time to place your votes here in this poll for us to determine which name would be perfect for the newest members of our growing AC Antiverse, our Ghost Ants. Your input will be much appreciated. I think it's safe to say that Skull Island here with its swirling misty waters looks super cool. But despite this, there was a problem. As mentioned at the start of this video, there were also tarantula spiderlings, which came with the collection, oddly living amicably with the ants, who were capable of floating on the water. And honestly, to be truthful, I'm not 100% sure ghost ants are unable to float and or swim like the Fire Nation fire ants can. Given this posing threat, this moat needed to have a water beast that would make sure that no creatures, neither tarantula spiderlings nor ghost ants, could escape Skull Island. It's time then to add creatures into the waters that could help us solve this impending threat. But before we populate the waters of Skull Island, huddled in this mossy bed, our unnamed Suriname horned frog lay still waiting for his next meal. 
the moss has begun to stick nicely to the vertical living walls of his home. But as usual, not much is happening in his moss-filled wet kingdom we call Pacmania. Scientifically known as Ceratophrys carnuta, this pet devil of ours sits idly in his moss-covered throne as he waits for his food, sometimes giving out a chirpy croak every now and then. He seems like a bit of a lazy one, but fact is, these frogs are big couch potatoes and aren't very athletic. Whatever the case, he's so beautiful, wouldn't you say? AC family, let's take a moment to give our devil frog here a name too. Please take a moment to vote here for a name based on my top five picks given by you guys from his last video. Thank you, AC Council, for your input. Wow, look at us. We voted on two names now. We're so productive. Let's keep going. So Pac-Man frogs, another name for these guys, get their name for being voracious eaters. And in the last video, our frog here turned his nose up at all food we offered, except for his frog pellets. But maybe this time, we could finally witness the power of his bite and feed him something a bit larger. Today, AC family, I would love to feed him a baby mouse. Brace yourselves, guys. This feeding is going to get crazy. When deciding what to do with the Dark Knight's housing, I had to look at their old home, which offered them a wonderful haven for two long years. The units were AC Outworlds, stacked and decorated with synthetic plants, so they would look gorgeous, but more importantly, be super low maintenance. These setups are basic and practical, compared to my other colonies. But I felt we could try this time to up the ante a bit and attempt something more challenging. As you've seen, other colonies in the ant room enjoy very complex and bioactive homes. Bioactive meaning the soils teem with microscopic soil creatures and organisms, like springtails, mites, worms, etc. that help break down the ants' garbage and even convert their waste to fertilizer for plants. In a way, these bioactive setups are self-cleaning and self-maintaining. Pretty amazing stuff, wouldn't you think? With their old setup, I needed to spot clean the leftover insect parts, which was okay, but it's also pretty fun to just leave the garbage in their setup for other organisms to take care of and for the plants to benefit from. So AC family, it was time to create for the Dark Knights, their very first true bioactive ant kingdom. One that the OG Dark Knights deserved. So before we get into what water beast we'll be adding to the waters of Skull Island, which you guys will help determine by the way, so stay tuned for that, there was something we needed to do first. Before any large water beast could move in here, we first and foremost needed to undergo a process called tank cycling. If you're new to fish tanks, a brand new water environment might seem like a perfect and clean place for an aquatic animal to live. But the reality is, a perfectly fresh fish tank, regardless of how clean the water is, is not an ideal home for many aquatic animals. In fact, a fresh tank can kill. The reason is because they'd be quickly filled with poison once the animal moves in. So AC family, get this. Any water creature living here would naturally produce waste, which creates ammonia, which is super toxic to animals. However, in a properly cycled fish tank, a team of beneficial bacteria exists to convert the toxic ammonia to nitrites, which are actually also toxic, but then another team of beneficial bacteria take over and convert the nitrites into nitrates, which are less toxic than ammonia and nitrites. These nitrates float around and can be removed from the water via regular partial water changes. So in essence, before any water beast can move in, we need to build up our teams of beneficial bacteria within the sand, the decor, and most importantly, our filter, which is designed to pump large volumes of water through filter medium designed to house beneficial bacteria. 
But how do we do this? How do we build up our beneficial bacteria? Well, that's where our preparatory team of creatures come in. Some selected smaller creatures will help us produce small amounts of waste, enough to slowly and gradually build up our bacterial populations. I can't wait to show them to you. But first, returning to Pacmania, as I approached the mossy wetland to try feeding our frog his baby mouse gift, I was excited to notice our horned frog sitting in a new spot for a change. Wow! He moved! Well, that's different. But as I looked closer, something was a bit off. He would frequently open his mouth and blink his eyes more than usual. AC family, have a look. See? Something was up. And I decided to keep a close eye on him to figure out what. All right. I was ready to build our Dark Knight's new bioactive terrarium. Let's do this. My plan was to create their new bioactive home within this glass enclosure in which they were already living. Yes, you heard right. I was going to create their new terrarium with them inside it, which is something I believe I haven't done on this channel yet. So first, I removed the tape that sealed the ants inside. I took the lid off to begin the process of transformation. Next, I had to cover all the sides with baby powder so the ants would slip off and not be able to escape while I worked around. I knew, however, that this layer would only be effective for a limited time. I had to move fast because the ants would soon be able to climb up the corners. Working quickly was of the essence here. Next, I had to add cocoa fiber to create bedding that would form air pockets. This is necessary so that the dark nights currently nested in the mounds of soil wouldn't be totally buried alive. This cushioning layer would also create good aeration for plant roots. I added activated carbon to help eliminate any toxins in the soil. Then it was time to add our very first layer of bioactive soils. This bioactive medium was taken from the terrarium of our late Blood Legion, whom we discovered in our last episode had naturally all died out. I often keep the soils of old terrariums because they already contain a lot of great bioactive soil, including creatures like springtails, isopods, mites, worms, and microbes. And these great populations of soil creatures can take a long time to develop and culture. So keeping aged terrarium soil for later use is always a great idea. Unless, of course, you know it contains harmful parasites or other lethal agents. Next, I added this huge driftwood piece. I loved its shape. My idea for the terrarium would be to create the forest floor area around a rotten tree stump. So this driftwood piece was perfect. I then added my large plants, medium-sized plants, and finally, a bag of freshly collected leaf litter and wild plants gathered from areas of my neighborhood. I knew this leaf litter layer was also quite bioactive and I couldn't wait to see what creatures I might have unknowingly scooped up while collecting it. And so, after two hours of work, the Dark Knight's new bioactive home was complete. Back to Skull Island, AC family, I'm pleased to present to you our new preparatory team, Cherry Shrimp, scientifically known as Neocaridina davidi. These little warriors are scavengers. I'll be feeding them little bits of fish food for now, and their waste will help us build our needed bacteria. Also, I'll be adding into the moat this elephant snail, taken from the river waters of the Selva de Fuego, home of our fire ants, the Fire Nation. The river already has a ton of these snails, so I felt this snail might enjoy its new home. Along with our shrimp, this elephant snail would surely be a great producer of nitrogenous waste to build up the beneficial bacteria in our filter. As a safety measure, I added this plant to help deal with ammonia spikes that may harm our preparatory team. 
You see, plants feed off nitrogenous waste and eat ammonia. I also added some java moss to assist the plant. I'm certain that these plants, alongside frequent partial water changes, would effectively keep the waters habitable for our preparatory team while our bacteria populations build up. So I proceeded to cut open this bag of shrimps into the waters. It was awesome to see aquatic life in the waters of Skull Island. Roam around, little ones. Make yourselves at home. You and the snail are playing important roles in these waters and this magnificent kingdom for the ghost dance. In a few weeks' time, these waters would be ready to accommodate our main water beast who could deal with any ants or baby tarantulas wanting to swim across. But in the meantime, I'll just have to keep an eye on the waters and make sure nothing crosses. Now, AC family, as for the water beast we'll be adding, once our waters are cycled and the bacteria is established, I had two main candidates for this much coveted position. I couldn't take my eyes off our frog, who was acting a bit weird. I've kept reptiles and amphibians long enough to know that if something feels off or there's anything odd about their behavior, it usually means I need to take the animal to the vet immediately. What could be wrong with our frog, AC family? Any guesses? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hmm. Little did I know, we'd be getting our answer later that day. AC family, voila! The new bioactive home of the Dark Knights. Isn't it just magical? I couldn't look away. The Dark Knights loved their new home and immediately began transferring their brood into a cavity within the driftwood. Dark Knights were exploring all over their terrarium. Some wandered atop the leaf litter, while others chose to check out spots within the multi-tiered tree stump. Take note of these gorgeous plants. Given the rich bioactivity of this habitat, I bet these plants will truly flourish more and more in the coming weeks. I just love the mix of plant species here, including vein plants, creeping fig, and calathea. And turns out, our effort to upscale the soils from the Blood Legion's terrarium, as well as the leaf litter from my neighborhood, really paid off. Looking closely into the bottom of this terrarium, I spotted multiple living creatures that would help the Dark Knights bioprocess waste materials within their domain. Look! Here is a bagworm. This moth larva gathers twigs and other dead plant debris to form its protective case home. This biodegradable mobile home serves as natural camouflage and protection from predators. Brilliant, right? And wow, look there! A millipede! And the ants weren't bothering it. Here's another one. It looks like other tenants are enjoying the tree stump habitat we made for the Dark Knights. I even spotted a jumping spider. No idea how that got in here. But hey, we have predators. The ants made sure to chase the jumping spider away from their nest as it got too close for their comfort. I expect to find more and more species of animals co-inhabiting the space with the Dark Knights. And it'll be cool to see how they interact. It's actually quite nice to see the Dark Knights living here. A nice change. I also installed this AC outworld with the bottom plate removed to the top of the terrarium to create a sort of penthouse where we could provide water in the form of a test tube, as well as sweets for the Dark Knights to eat. This AC outworld would also provide ventilation, since the glass enclosure is fully sealed. A barrier around the top, rounded lip, would help me work around the Dark Knights when inserting food, by keeping them from escaping. Prey insects could be directly placed through the top and into the terrarium. And coolest part was, I wouldn't have to worry about cleaning it up due to the terrarium's bioactive effect. I also plugged this hole up in case I decided I wanted to connect the setup to their old home again in the future. But for now, I was totally okay with watching the Dark Knights frolicking their new natural forest floor. So guys, as I mentioned, 
The time has come to choose the future water beast to serve as a guard to the home of the ghost dance. Presenting to you my top two picks to fill this essential post. AC Council, I will give you an opportunity now to take part in choosing which water creature shall join Skull Island. Candidate A, an African clawed frog. This amphibian, scientifically known as Xenopus levis, is popular for its three short claws on each of its hind feet. It's tongueless and toothless. To eat, it has to use its smooth hands to shove food into its mouth, then suck it in its mouth. African clawed frogs are scavengers. They would eat anything they can fit into their mouths, living or dead, even eating organic wastes. Surely any ant or spiderling choosing to venture into the waters could become a tasty snack. Candidate B, a betta fighting fish. This is undoubtedly in my books, one of the most gorgeous looking fish ever. Scientifically known as betta splendens, it is a favorite in the aquarium trade. They may be aggressive when provoked, but based on past experience with the species, I feel they too might relish an ant or spiderling floating on the water. Plus, the vibrant colors of a betta fighting fish might be a beautiful contrast to the eerie vibe of Skull Island. So what do you think, AC Council? Which creature should be the future water beast to this moat? Please take a moment to vote here. Once again, thank you for voting. As always, you help determine the fates of the inhabitants and worlds of our Antiverse. Do stay tuned for when we finally get to add our ultimate water beast to the waters of Skull Island. I returned to Pacmania later that day to discover that the frog had returned to his usual spot on his mossy bed. Strangely, he looked a bit brighter in color now, and, well, rather back to his normal self. He wasn't mouth gaping nor blinking excessively anymore. And then what I spotted in the water gave me the answers I needed. Skin. Oh, AC family, Turns out, all that blinking and mouth opening was because our frog was shedding his skin. Like many frog species, Pac-Man frogs shed their skin from time to time. They also eat their shed skin, so as not to lose important nutrients. But it seems he left a bit of it in the water. How adorable. Shedding must have been quite the ordeal for our horned frog. But let's hope it worked up an appetite. As a reward? It's time to feed him a dead pinky mouse now. Hungry? Yes! Success! Enjoy, my beloved frog! AC family, today was a pretty awesome day, wouldn't you say? We added a team of creatures to prep Skull Island's waters, gave a name to the ghost dance, created a new bioactive terrarium for our dark nights, gave a name to our devil frog, as well as watched him enjoy a big tasty treat. We did good today, AC family. When caring for animals, I try to do my best to ensure the many worlds we create continue to evolve and get better, and that our creatures remain healthy and happy. Even though I am the owner of these various amazing pets, I don't ever feel like a dominator of these life forms, but rather, my role in their lives feels more like I am working with them. I feel this mindset is important even on a larger planetary scale. As custodians of Earth, we are each called to keep vigilant for anything out of the ordinary, cultivate to make way for new life, and reconstruct when needed. In the end, all parties, from small organisms to larger ones like us, benefit. Today's episode is actually my collaboration and contribution to the Team Trees movement with Mr. Beast, Smarter Every Day, Mark Rober, and thousands of other YouTubers in their quest to plant 20 million trees by January 2020. We are all custodians of Earth, called to restore and rebuild where needed. So I formally invite you, AC family, to join the Team Trees movement too. You can donate here 
to help reach the target of planting 20 million trees. It only costs $1 per tree. This simple gesture will make a big difference. Speaking of trees and being vigilant, making sure everything was in order, I noticed the canopy of Vortesha, our treetop forest home to our aggressive weaver ant colony, the Emerald Empire, was in need of some serious maintenance. First, the piping of the ring system had unstuck from the glass. Also, the trees had seriously overgrown and they needed to be cut back big time. But there's just one problem. The only way in was to open these front glass doors. And well, it seems the weaver ends had decided to fuse its main leaf nest to the glass. Oh boy. This whole maintenance operation was going to be interesting. AC family, what do you guys think of this week's episode? Do you like the Dark Knight's new tree stump bioactive terrarium? It looks like we have some maintenance to do in next week's episode. And I have some great updates for you. Hope you remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and hit the like button every single time, including now. Also, just a quick mention that if you've been wanting to get into ant keeping this year, our big annual AC Holidays promo is happening right now at AntsCanada.com until January 2020 with 20% off all hybrid nests and hybrid gear packs plus a free copy of our newly revised 2019 Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook ebook using the coupon code ANTLOVEFOREVER. So go on to AntsCanada.com to browse our shop for all the ant keeping gear you need. Just a note that if you would like your order to arrive before Christmas, you must order before December 18th if within US and Canada, or December 11th everywhere else. We also have gift cards in case you aren't sure what to get your ant loving special recipient. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC in our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you'd like to see some extended play footage of the Dark Knights living in their new tree stump bioactive terrarium, which by the way also needs a name, so I'm taking some name suggestions in the comments. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, why are ghost ants called ghost ants? Congratulations to Keiko, who correctly answered, ghost ants are named for their translucent legs and gasters making their darker colored heads look like they're floating. This gives the appearance of them looking like ghosts. Congratulations, Keiko! You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, why do we need to cycle our tank before adding in our great water beast? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.